Welcome back to another FPL video. Today I'm talking about my latest draft and this will be my final draft before the team selection video and then we go into the deadline stream on Friday so be sure to tune in for that as well and there's also going to be a rating your teams video which is coming up very soon so there's plenty of content ahead of the new season and it's almost upon us after a really lengthy summer break you could argue. Hopefully you've had a really good one. Let's get straight into this video starting with my goalkeeper choice which has changed from my previous drafts and it is a new signing and I think you'll know who that is going to be but there's quite a few changes from my last draft and there's still a few things to iron out and ultimately I think my final team in the team selection video will be kind of a mixture of the free drafts you've seen on my channel so if you have enjoyed this video be sure to smash the like button and subscribe for new let's try to get this video to 150 likes and also trying to get to 20,000 subscribers I think we can get to that milestone very soon but without further ado Let's jump straight into this video. Despite a shaky preseason, I still think Anana is one of the best goalkeepers in FPL. Man United conceded in each friendly in which Anana has started, so they've conceded six goals in three games. But in Serie A last season, Anana kept eight clean sheets in around 25 appearances. He also made 62 saves. And in UCL Fantasy, which we also cover on this channel, he also kept eight clean sheets and he got 63 UCL Fantasy points, which is by far the most of any goalkeeper and in terms of fixtures you've got Wolves at home in game week one and Nottingham Forest in game week three the other game weeks are a bit mixed bag but those two games you'd be very confident of a clean sheet for Manchester United and that's where Anana could get a clean sheet maybe get some save points and who knows maybe even some bonus points along the way in terms of his ownership he's now 25% owned so he is definitely a template pick in the goalkeeper position and after all the murmurings in terms of Arsenal with David Raya heavily linked to a move for the Gunners that's where Ramsdale's ownership has gone down he was close to 30% ownership and with Anana being added to FPL and also that news Ramsdale has actually become less of a template pick and Anana is now the template goalkeeper of choice but let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below one other goalkeeper that I'm also heavily interested in is Flecken from Brentford and even then you can spend 5 million on Anana, 4.5 million on Flecken and you've got two goalkeepers from good teams with very good fixtures especially from Brentford's part to start the season and it only costs 9.5 million. The thing is you've also got some really good 4 million goalkeeper options all of a sudden with Matt Turner being heavily linked with a move to Nottingham Forest. I never really considered him last season, but Gabriel has been in most of my drafts ahead of the upcoming season, and he faces Nottingham Forest at home in game week one, which is a fantastic way to start the season. He scored three goals in the last campaign, and he scored 10 Premier League goals overall. So he's one of the highest scoring Premier League defenders in the last three seasons. He also kept 14 clean sheets for the Gunners in the last campaign, playing every single minute pretty much. So he is very reliable in that regard. He also got 15 bonus points points and in terms of FPL points overall in the last two seasons he has gotten 146 points on both occasions and Arsenal are top of the fixture difficulty rating for the first seven game weeks according to Fantasy Football Hub and in terms of pre-season Gabriel has played in six of those matches and he's picked up three yellow cards including two in his last three games so I'm a bit concerned about that I think he could get the odd yellow card here and there which also gets him out of the bonus points contention but I still think he's a very solid option coming in at five million and that's why I'm picking him over the likes of Saliba who's half a million more expensive Ben White I think the other one that could be very impressive is Jurian Timber who was fantastic in the Community Shield final against Manchester City City. and also Arsenal haven't been too impressive in terms of their defensive record in pre-season they've conceded eight goals in six games and only one clean sheet which came against the MLS All-Stars in terms of ownership another template pick with 25.9% ownership but coming in at 5 million great fixtures playing every single minute for Arsenal I think Gabriel thoroughly deserves it and is a fantastic option in FPL while he didn't get too many points last season, I still think John Stones is a good FPL option. And if he can get those 60 plus minutes, at least for the first 10 gimmicks of the season, let's say, then I think he could be a very solid choice because Manchester City have some very good fixtures and John Stones is playing in this 
inverted right back role playing in the midfield and he can get those bonus points and the odd goal contribution facing Burnley away first is a pretty decent way to kick things off I know they're away from home but Man City's record against Burnley is fantastic they even beat them 6-0 last season in the FA Cup John Stone's got two goals and two assists in the last Premier League campaign with only seven clean sheets and 93 FPL points overall but he also got 13 bonus points and considering the number of minutes he actually played throughout the whole campaign I think that's actually pretty impressive and he also scored in a 5-3 win against Yokohama FM but in terms of preseason, no clean sheets for Manchester City seven goals conceded in four games so that could be a bit of a worry same with Arsenal as well but I would expect both teams to tighten up going into the new season and of course they played a very high level game in the Queen's Shield final as well and I have to say John Stones was actually pretty solid and one of Man City's best players on the day in terms of expected points amongst defenders for the first three games Mix. John Stones is third of all players according to Draft Hound and in terms of ownership 28.4% once again so all 10 play picks so far I do hate to say it and I would like to recommend some differentials as well but I think in terms of goalkeepers and defenders I think these options are highly owned for a reason and maybe flecking in goal is the differential that I would recommend to you the final defender is the most 10 play pick of them all Purvis Stupinian who comes in at over 50% ownership he got one goal seven assists last season 10 clean sheets, 128 FPL points overall, and he is second highest in terms of expected points amongst defenders for the first three game weeks, according to Draft Pound, and Brighton are top of the FDR, the fixture difficulty rating, for the first three game weeks, and they are second for the first six game weeks overall, according to Fantasy Football Hub. So I think Estupinian is a great option for the first three game weeks, and even decent for the first six. After that, though, you can make a really good case for selling him. I'm going very heavy on the Gunners, but Kaosaka is back into my draft. In the last one I had, it was Martinelli and Odegaard, but this time Saka comes back in. And also Martinelli, who's actually been in every single one of my drafts, including my preliminary draft, before any FPL prices were released. So in terms of Bakayo Saka, he scored 14 times and got 12 assists. And in terms of official assists as well, bearing in mind, he was actually the only Premier League player to get double digits in goals and assists. But of course, once you factor in FPL assists as well, Salah was the only other one to reach that milestone too. And Saka also got 19 bonus points, over 200 FPL points. And in terms of pre-season, two goals and two assists. And he only blanked once, and that was against Manchester United in a 2-0 loss and he also assisted Trossard's equaliser which was very fortuitous against Manchester City and in terms of chances of scoring according to Draft Hound in Gameweek 1 Bakao Saka is fourth with a 40% chance of scoring and not only that in terms of assisting he is third highest in that regard as well according to Draft Hound and his ownership is 56% which I do hate to say but Martinelli is the more differential pick of the two and also he's got the lowest ownership of every single player covered so far with 14.1% ownership he scored 15 times got nine assists and also close to 200 FPL points and his XGI was 20.55 which was the most of any Arsenal player he got one goal and one assist in five preseason matches but I have to say he has been a bit underwhelming he's made some mistakes losing the ball which almost has led to goals and I think at one point it did actually lead to a goal conceded but Martinelli is still a fantastic player he offers Arsenal directness and also he's very lethal on the counter-attack and at 8 million being priced half a million cheaper than Saka and Odegaard I think he offers just as good value perhaps even better but it all depends on the minutes and Trossard has been absolutely fantastic in pre-season but he's been playing as either a midfielder or as a false nine when he comes on and then also drifting to the left-hand side so I'm still a bit worried about Trossard and what that could mean for Martinelli, but they can still both coexist in the same team. And against Nottingham Forest, I would play both of them. Let's see what Mikel Arteta does as well, because I think Kai Havertz will still get the nod with Gabriel Jesus being injured for the time being. And in terms of expected points in Gemic 1, Martinelli is fourth, only behind Haaland, Saka and Salah. Now we're going to go to other midfielders. They're not really low-owned Bruno Fernandes comes in at 26.6% ownership. He scored eight times and got nine assists last season. And he also created 32 big chances. Only 176 FPL points. And I say only because he has set some very lofty standards in the past. In preseason, he scored once in four games. And that goal came against Arsenal in a 2-0 victory 
for Man United. And in terms of chance of assisting, Bruno Fernandes is fourth highest of any player with 28% according to Draft Town. So I think Bruno Fernandes is a solid pick, but he's not a differential, unfortunately. And the same goes for his teammate, Marcus Rashford, who is a very template pick as well. Maybe not as much as someone like Bakayo Saka, but still, his ownership is 44.7%. He scored 17 times last season, 7 assists, 35 big chances, all very impressive numbers. And he got 205 FPL points, which is the most of any of these midfielders in my starting 11. And also any midfielder that I do have, because we are going for a five-man midfield here. And in terms of preseason, Rashford was actually blanking in every single game. But against Lens the other day, he scored once and assisted once. But in the other three games, he did blank, of course. I still think Marcus Rashford will have a good season. Maybe not to the same standards as he did last time, especially with Man United signing Hoyland up front. I think that could be a bit of a problem with Rashford because he's not going to be the main focus all the time for the goal scoring opportunities. But I still think he will get a good number of goals and assists. 15 plus you'd still expect. And in terms of assists, maybe getting close to 10 once again. The final midfielder is Eze, who is probably the standout option in terms of preseason form. He has scored twice and gotten five assists in just six preseason games. And he comes in at around 16% ownership, just under that figure last season he got 10 goals and five assists 21 bonus points and also 159 fpl points overall so he was one of the highest scoring midfielders yes he might not have gotten the same amount as the other four midfielders you see here from arsenal and man united but he was still right up there and for his price coming in at 6.5 million he is one of the standout options i know matoma march and pascal gross have the great fixtures for the first three games because you've also got Mbumo, who is out of position and he's got some good long-term fixtures but Eze has the form from pre-season and I think he could be absolutely fantastic and I wouldn't even be surprised if he got something like 15 goals or maybe getting 10 assists as well and having double digits in both goals and assists it wouldn't surprise me at all he's a quality player and definitely the best that Crystal Palace have to offer he has failed to score in his last six official games for Man City, but Erling Haaland still finds a way into every single one of my drafts, and his ownership has actually gone down slightly. He was around 87.2%. It's now gone down to 86.6%, but that is still ridiculous, and by far the most we've ever seen in FPL. He obviously broke the goal scoring records last season with 36 Premier League goals in his debut campaign, 9 assists, 40 bonus points, 272 FPL points overall, and 59 big chances. And that is what makes the performance against Arsenal so surprising. He amassed exactly zero XG against the Gunners. He only had about 13 touches and did absolutely nothing in that game. But I would certainly expect that to change in Gameweek 1 and also in future meetings with all top six clubs, including Arsenal. And Erling Haaland is top in terms of expected points according to Draft Pound and also in terms of highest chance of score with 68%, which has gone down slightly. It was around 70% a few weeks ago, but that's still extremely high and 25% more than second place Harry Kane. And in terms of preseason, he scored twice against Yokohama FM. And in the other three games, though, he has blanked, which is obviously very surprising for Erling Haaland standards. And like I said, he hasn't scored in the last six official games for Man City, which includes the Premier League, Champions League, and the Community Shield final. But I'm still not worried about him whatsoever. And the same goes for my second striker, Ollie Watkins. It's a bit of a shame that the likes of Gabriel Jesus and Nkuku have gotten injured because it makes it so obvious, you could say, to go for Ollie Watkins, who's in great form in pre-season. He's also playing for a very promising club in Aston Villa. He showed some fantastic form since Unai Emery has taken over, getting 15 goals, 8 assists last season, 25 bonus points and 175 FPL points overall and in terms of his goal scoring record in the last three Premier League seasons he has always gotten double digits and this time round he's better than ever and I would expect more consistency from Ollie Watkins in pre-season he's got four goals in five games the only blank coming in a 3-3 draw against Brentford 
and we had so many different options in the forward line with Darwin Nunez also showing some prolific goal scoring form. You had Gabriel Jesus, Nkuku, Oli Watkins, but now all of a sudden, I think the template will shift towards Oli Watkins, who still has around 22% ownership, but I think that could increase to 30% by the time we get to the Gemic 1 deadline, which is unfortunate. Not a great fixture to start the season against Newcastle away, but it wouldn't surprise me if Oli Watkins scored in a defeat, for example, and he's got some good long-term fixtures after Gemic 1. So I'm very happy with Oli Watkins and this starting 11. Let's now move on to the bench and the captaincy. While Matt Turner hasn't officially moved to Nottingham Forest yet, it's only a matter of time for a reported 7 million fee and he's also going to be facing Arsenal in game week one. I wouldn't be surprised if he put in a pretty good performance because he is a solid goalkeeper on the international stage. And he is now 4 million and he's the only 4 million goalkeeper that will offer you certainty of starts. Ariola and Forster would be the next most likely to get game time. But Turner is the only official 4 million starting goalkeeper that we have in FPL. So if you're not going to go for two rotating goalkeepers like Flecken and Anana, or maybe go for Pickford as well, then I would recommend Turner as your backup goalkeeper once he signs for Nottingham Forest officially and that transfer is recognised by FPL. And in terms of the fixtures for Turner, he's got Burnley at home and Sheffield United at home in gimmicks 5 and 2. So I think he could be a pretty solid choice. He comes in around 1.6% ownership and I think that will only surely increase once he makes that official move to Nottingham Forest. Then we've got Pal Torres here as well and I've covered him before in the Best Defenders video. He only scored once in La Liga last season. He also provided zero assists but his xg was 2.39 and he won two penalties so in fpl terms he would have gotten two assists if the penalty is converted and aston villa kept one clean sheet in a 3-0 win against lazio but in the other two games aston villa have looked very shaky defensively conceding four times in the other two games including three against brentford and pal torres is by far the biggest differential alongside turner with 3.4 percent ownership and some good long-term fixtures after game week one. Then I've also gone for Bulldog, who comes in at only 4 million, and he was actually very impressive in the 2019 20 season when Sheffield United finished ninth because he got two goals, four assists, and also 13 clean sheets in that campaign. And his ownership is under 10%, but still, I think he could be a good 4 million defender, perhaps even better than the likes of Bell and Bayer from Luton Town and Burnley. Now, with Sheffield United, they haven't been too impressive in preseason, but also not too shabby. And Bolduc actually scored in a 3-1 win against Derby County and kept the clean sheet in a 0-0 draw against Estoril. 142 FPL points in that aforementioned 2019-2020 season. So he could be a very solid option at such a cheap price as well. The last player that I have is Mubama from West Ham. And he's got two goals in four preseason games, scoring against Perth Glory and Tottenham Hotspur and he comes in at 6.9% ownership. So he could be the standout 4.5 million forward, but I'm not expecting him to start games. The same goes for every other 4.5 million forward, unfortunately. But let's keep an eye out for Balogun if he does move to another Premier League club from Arsenal. Although I don't think that'll be the case as he's heavily linked to the likes of Monaco and Lens. But let's now go into the captaincy, which is also very important. And once again, Erling Haaland has the armband and Bukayo Saka is the vice captain. I'm also considering Bruno Fernandes and Marcus Rashford. Even Martinelli is a bit of an outside shout, but I think Erling Haaland will break his six game goal scoring drought and probably score a brace or something like that against Burnley away. So I'm still gonna stick with him and show some faith. He's also gonna be so highly owned and his effective ownership will be absolutely ridiculous to say the least. But let's now head over to FPL.team, talk about how this team would look like in Gemic 2 very briefly, compare it to Gemic 1 before wrapping up this video. As pointed out by FPL.team, I have too many players selected from Arsenal, but that will certainly change once Turner moves to Nottingham Forest and he faces Sheffield United at home in game week two. So I would consider starting him over Anana, who has a visit to Tottenham Hotspur away. And I would go for a back three of Gabriel facing Crystal Palace away, John Stones, Anna Stupinian, a midfield five of Saka, Martinelli, Bruno Fernandes, Rashford, and Eze. And the same front two as always of Erling Haaland and Ollie Watkins. The bench would also look pretty solid. Pal Torres at home to Everton. There could be a clean sheet there. Bolduck away to Nottingham Forest isn't the worst fixture in the world. And Mabama at home to Chelsea, who will probably always sit third on my bench, but you just never know with him. He could 
could be a surprise package amongst the 4.5 million forwards. In terms of expected points, it's only 52.3. And if we compare it to Game Week 1, for example, it's 65.5. So I think maybe I'm focusing a bit too much on my Game Week 1 performance, and I need to look a bit further ahead to Game Week 2 and also the fixtures afterwards to have a bit of a medium to long-term plan and also prevent the usage of an early wild card, which I certainly want to avoid if possible. But it's a good starting eleven, and I'm kind of going really heavy on certain teams like Man City, Arsenal and Man United. But maybe I could vary things a little bit and that could help me in the long term as well. Only one Brighton player and they've got some fantastic games to start the season up until Gimmick 3 and even up until Gimmick 6. It's still pretty decent overall, but it's not going to be perfect. There's no such thing as a perfect draft. And I think I'll make a few changes before the final team selection video and maybe start to incorporate some of the additions from my other drafts and make a bit of a hybrid to wrap things up in the end. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. I'd highly recommend you check out Draft Town. The links are in the comment section, also in the description below. And I've been referencing it quite a lot in this video and also in my other content too. And you'll see just how useful it is with their predicted lineups and also the assistant manager tool, which helps you pick the best players for your team. There are so many resources there at your disposal if you become a paid member. And I would highly recommend you check out my link in order to do so. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it or found it useful, then be sure to smash the like button and subscribe for new. Let's try to smash the like button, get this over to 200 likes and also getting closer to 20,000 subscribers and beyond. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, DylanRCM and check all the links in the description below for the Patreon, Championships, Discord server, the FPL League and Draft Town. I'd highly recommend it. I wish you all the best luck for the upcoming season. Enjoy the rest of your summer break and I'll see you next time.